Hey, what's going on, Word Nation? Thank you so much for joining our last message in the man cave, man. It's been fun. Uh, we've been having a great time here uh, right at the house in the man cave with wisdom from the man cave. So thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who tuned in for the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had various topics from finances to, uh, of course, relationships. But uh, I, I just pray that you were able to be impacted in some form or some fashion. Let's get ready to jump right into it. We're on part two uh, of our message. Uh, from last week and so hopefully you caught that uh, and I kind of left you with a little cliffhanger but uh, let's get ready to jump right into the word of God so that you can see it our opening text scripture uh, right before we pray is Job 2 verses 8 and 10 let's pray father I thank you I thank you for this awesome opportunity to sow into your people father God the wisdom of God thank you for uh, allowing me to see scripture in a way that's going to be impactful to someone and insightful to someone that leads to some type of transformation so God we thank you we give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to Job 2 and 8, which was our opening text scripture from last week. Uh, Job, the Bible says in verse 8, it says, He scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Uh, curse God and die. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Look, they're back and forth already. Sound like a married couple already, if you ask me. Should we accept only the good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. And so um, I did, we're doing a little two-part series called Did COVID Kill My Relationship? Did COVID Kill My Relationship? Let's basically be honest. We all know somebody who has divorced, who has broke up, who it seemed like during the pandemic, uh, that these individuals went their separate ways. It is to suggest that if if it wasn't a pandemic, then they would not have uh, actually exited the marriage, exited the relationship. But what we were doing is on last week, some fact finding. I gave you some statistics to support both arguments. Uh, you know, and so, you know, we're trying to come up with the conclusion is can something like a pandemic kill a relationship? I gave you some principles like divorce doesn't happen uh, on the date of the papers. Divorce happens over a period of time. You don't show up at the judge and say, this is the day we got divorced. No, divorce starts long before you actually get before the judge. And why? Because many people have problems and they let them go unresolved for so long because many of us have been taught that if we don't do anything about it, then it'll just fix itself on its own. But unsolved problems grow. And I gave you some uh, wisdom on that. And I told you that uh, also relationships have to be tested and relationships that haven't been tested can't be tough. Now, meaning that uh, this is going to go through some, there's going to be some ebbs and flows, some ups and downs in a relationship. There's going to be some days you love them to life, but there are some days that you, you know, really want them out of your sight and you didn't care if they died, to be honest with you. Uh, so I've seen the extreme throughout the years. And, uh, and I, I, went ho I went ahead and told you that also that you got to be careful of allowing uh, outside voices to dominate your domicile, which means that you got to be careful of taking advice from people about mountains that never have been to a mountain, uh, taking advice from people who, about finances who don't have finances. And so uh, I told you uh, quite a few things on last week. So make sure you catch that message so that you could be caught up as we are in full swing on today. And I, I left you in Job 1 and, two, uh, 1 and 12. Job 1 and 12. It says this. It says, all right, you may test him, O Lord. You may test him, uh, O Lord. He says, the Lord said to Satan, do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. Now, this is so full of, of preaching principles right here, man. We could just literally stay on this all day because there's something that I saw in this particular text that I had never seen in previous times as it relates to relationships uh, or what have you. See, you got to first understand that the goal was to attack Job and to get him to renege on his commitment. And so what I've learned is that Satan often uses the human mind to manipulate the commitment, pastor, make it make sense. When the scripture says in Job 1 and 12, he says you could do everything Thing to him. Just don't harm him physically. In other words, you could take his possessions or what have you. You could do all of that. Just don't harm him physically. What are you saying, Pastor Rich? I'm saying that the enemy often uses the mind. He, he, he uses the mind in a marriage to get you away from the commitment. So the goal was to attack Job and to get him to renege from his commitment. And the, the goal of the enemy is to attack your relationship to get you to decommit. 
Are you following me? Do you see the principle right here? See, because one of the strategies of Satan is to get you to say no to something you said yes to. Come on, let me attack their mind. Let me bring them so much mental stress in a relationship. Let me have them worry about what can happen more than what's actually happened. Let me uh, get them to dwell on the past so they can't really develop a good future. Let me cause them to self-sabotage that relationship that God blessed them with so that they can curse God and say, look at the mess I got into following you. Come on now, you see, you see the similarities there. And so even during COVID, we see so many people who not just left the church as an institution, they left the church as a whole because they look at God like, look at all this stuff that happened. My grandma died of COVID and my friends and my classmates died of COVID and all these things happened over the last year and a half. And so now I'm cursing God uh, or what have you uh, by saying, I'm no longer following you because you allowed this to happen on your watch. And so he's after the commitment of the relationship. And we saw the same principle unfold on on COVID as it relates to marriages, as it relates to relationships, as it relates to business partnerships. We saw relationships decommit uh, a lot because of this particular attack. Now, in other words, what are you saying, Pastor Rich? Make it even plainer. If I can get into the mind of your mate, maybe I can get your spouse to think that, well, maybe my spouse don't love me. Just like he gets into the mind of the average believer and say, you know what, all this stuff I done been through, maybe God don't love me. You know, maybe I can get into the mind of a mate and, and have them think that maybe they're no longer attracted to me. You know, and you see other folk getting blessed and you begin to think, God, well, maybe God is mad at me. and He's not blessing me like 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 he does other folk. And maybe the favor that's on my life is no longer there. Maybe I can get into the mind of one of the mates and uh, maybe think that the text message from uh, the number they don't recognize is the other the man or the other woman. You, you see that? It's always to get you to decommit from the relationship, to decommit from the relationship. If I could get them to say, I don't want what they said I do to in the presence of the Almighty, then I can actually uh, make God look like a fool. See, that was Satan's whole notion, was to actually get God to look like a fool, to say, you put all your eggs and your faith in, in Job, and he's a mere man. I'm going to attack him to the point to where he's going to curse God. See, the enemy knows this. Come on now, please catch this. The enemy knows that if he can ever build a kingdom marriage, if you ever build a kingdom marriage, you create kingdom chaos. Why, Pastor Rich? Because kingdom relationships create kingdom chaos. See, I told you last week, he is afraid of what y'all could be if y'all were on the same page, if you were on the same page financially. In other words, you agreed to the small, minuscule things of the household. In other words, you uh, were on the same page financially. You were satisfied with what your mate brought in and what they're bringing in and how they're saving and what you're doing with allocation of money. See, you got to realize most arguments ensue because of financial mismanagement. Oh, my God, my, my God. I, I wish I had time to really dig into this. And we're going to touch on it again in a little bit. But what if y'all were on the same page and making love and, you know, and, and there was no void there? Because a lot of calls that I get even from the brothers is that, hey, man, man, maybe you can I allow Lady Ty to talk to my wife because, man, it's just some things are not happening there in the bedroom. It's just really kind of cold and I feel like I need that. And maybe this brother is an alpha male and he needs it more than the beta male that you used to date in high school. You married an alpha so that there's certain things that come with the alpha male territory. Are you following me right now? Uh, what happened if you get together in a relationship and you're on the same page spiritually? So the enemy wants to get you to date down to somebody who don't even know John 316 because you'll find yourself trying to uplift them spiritually and they'll create a burden on you. This is why the Bible says you need to get with somebody who's equally yoked. You don't have time to teach somebody John 3.16 when you're dating them. You need somebody that can speak in tongues that's filled with the Holy Ghost, that can snatch them back when they get into this crazy stuff. What if you were on the same page and you're giving and you're sowing? I'm seeing so many couples who houses are divided because there is a dichotomy in what to believe as it relates to giving. So now you got a whole household that's half blessed and God wants to do more, but he only can do to the extent of your obedience. Please catch this. Please catch this. What we'll see who, who who the two of you could possibly help if you were on the same page. What young couple would come asking for mentoring if they saw kingdom in your marriage? 
You know, who could you possibly help? See, you got to realize it's a trick of the enemy to get you to decommit from relationships that you've been committed to because it's all about making God look like, look at, look at you now, God. Look at your man right there. Look at your pastor right there. Look at your minister right there. Look at your servant right there. Look at your daughter right there. And so he can try to get God to look like some type of fool. See, pastor, make it make sense. Sum it up for me. The same strategy he uses to break your commitment to him he uses to break up commitment with them man I I think I just said a whole sermon right there I'm gonna repeat again the same strategy he uses to break your commitment with him he uses to break your commitment with them in other words your vertical relationship he used the same strategies to break up your vertical relationship with God that he used in the horizontal relationships with other people Man, and it's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy to think that somebody who's on your team is playing against you. Come on now, somebody. This is your teammate. This is somebody that uh, you join together and say, we're going to build together. While, while, while what we're seeing even during COVID and even before COVID and even I'm sure it's going to last after COVID, where you have one person building while their mate is taking the bricks that they're using to help build with. And so it's like working against your partnership. You see, in Job 1 and 13, come on, let's look at this, man, because there's so much wisdom in the book of Job as it relates to relationships, because the principle is this now, the same strategy he uses to break his commitment with him, he uses to break the commitment with him. So let's look at it. Job 1 and 13 says, a messenger arrived at Job's home with the news your oxen were plowing, the donkeys feeding beside them, uh, verse 15, then the Sabians raided us, they stole all the animals kill all the farm hands man th th this is so this is so profound i am the only one who escaped to tell you verse 16 he says while i'm still speaking another messenger arrived with this news the fire of god has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep all of the shepherds and i am the only one who escaped to tell you now i, I need you to catch this because there's so much in the scripture and i only have so much time but here it is. A messenger comes to tell Job, like, look, something has happened while your ox were plowing, which means that while your business was in motion, because we know currency flows, while your business in motion, because that's how he was getting his money. Job was very wealthy. He wasn't broke at all. And so the Bible says the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. He said the Sabian, somebody came in and stole something. Then while he was still speaking, somebody else came and said, look, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you there is so much going on. First of all, first of all, you see how his livelihood was attacked. His means to be able to get some money was cut off. What COVID did was cut off the means to people to get money. People were laid off without pay and people lost income. Now, there were people who got blessed on COVID. Let's not let's not be um, cognizant. Uh, of the fact that some people made billions and some became millionaires during COVID. You know, so this is not just uh, this is not just saying that, you know, everybody suffered during COVID. But what I am saying is that uh, that for the last year and a half, many people's streams dried up. Especially people who even had multiple streams. There were multiple streams that dried up. And so it was a blessing that they had some streams to be able to feed their family. And so here it is. You see in the scripture with the enemy Satan to attack their livelihood. He attacked his means to be able to get some money. But, but this even in the scripture, and I didn't have this in my notes, but something jumped out at me. Notice the Bible says the fire of God had fallen from heaven. This came from the messenger. The fire of God had fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all of your shepherds. See what's going on, too, over the last year and a half. People have demand, they have have blamed their demise on the deity. They have blamed their misfortunes on the man upstairs. They have blamed their issues with God himself. They're blaming God for all of these things where they don't understand that Satan is the one that, that is behind destruction. Why? Because his purpose is to what? Kill, to steal, and to destroy. You, you see that? But notice how the messenger placed and impregnated a thought in Job's mind to say, this coming from God. 
This is coming from God. And so one of the things that you got to understand that if it's destruction, that, you know, God ain't behind it. Now, is he behind some things? Because there are some things that God will destroy. God will send his plagues in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to understand that Satan was behind him, but the messenger said it was God. So here it is in Job 1 and 17. Job 1 and 17, the Bible says, while he was still speaking, a third message arrived with this news saying three bands of Chaldean rares have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one to escape to tell you. It's amazing that how he always sent a messenger, right? Because somehow the enemy always has a way of getting bad news to you. You know, good news gets stopped up all the time, but all of a sudden it seemed like the enemy always allowed the bad news to get through. But here it is. Do you realize that the stress that came from relationship or most of the stress that came uh, during COVID was from the inability to pay bills? In other words, the enemy attacked the economy. And so when you're in a relationship, understand this money does matter in marriage. <laughs> Did you catch that? Money does matter in marriage. Yeah, in a relationship, money does matter. And, and let's just be true. You've heard me say this, and I'm going to say it till I go home to be with the Lord and to Jesus come back. Some of y'all too broke to be dating. See, see, let me tell you something. And y'all may not like this. You may leave the church, but you'll never say that uh, you have not been told. If you hooked up with somebody that's cute, but can't even afford some wheels to go to from point A to point B, then they are not in a position to be dating you, which means now you got to come down to bring them up. They got to borrow your car just to get to point A to point B. In other words, you are come up to them. It's no way that a man should be dropping you off at church and then they go somewhere and do whatever they want to do. No, they need to be at church with you. Come on now, somebody. Money matters in a relationship and money definitely matters in a marriage. You know, people say, well, money don't make you happy. Money will make you a whole lot happier than you already are. And there's some married couples that's on this live right now. And you can put some fire emojis. In, uh, and there's some single folk that know this that maybe been married, been in a relationship. You can attest to this, that money matters in a relationship. Because the truth of the matter is some of you are dating another son. I know you don't want to hear this, but you got to hear it. See, and money matters, especially to women, because women need safety and safety is often summed up in the amount of money that they have to assure them that things will be taken care of if they get into a hard spot. Here it is. How is it that your woman is in a tight spot and you can't even tighten her up? God, I wish I had time. I don't have time. I got 11 minutes. Money matters in a marriage. It matters. It matters. They can't feel safe if they're unsafe. They don't feel sexy if they're not safe in a relationship. Can I keep going? Job 1 and 18, Job 1 and 18 says this. It says, while he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in the oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. I, I just, I'm, I'm tripping off that. Verse 20 said, Job stood and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and he fell to the ground in worship. See, 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 this is so profound. So, so here it is. He takes his livelihood. He takes his employees. All these people who helped with his livelihood, all these people are gone, except the people that he let go send the message, right? See, understand this. Now, the next verse is the Bible says, while he was still speaking, so this is happening back to back, he messes with the kids to mess with your mind. Yeah, see, he comes after your money. He's coming after your livelihood. He's coming after your peace. He's coming after your children. Oh, we saw all of this during COVID. He messes with the kids. So, so this is what we're seeing right now during COVID as we're in this political turmoil about whether to allow masks in school or not. He messes with your kids to mess with your mind. He uses it in various perspectives. Watch this now. He uses your kids to drive a wedge between the parents. Yeah, he'll have you feeling like the decisions your kids made are your fault. Yeah, they're at 16, 17. Maybe they got into some trouble. And now maybe, uh, you know, even to their demise. And now the enemy will play with your mind. Come on now to get you to decommit from him now. To get you to do what, what happens with them to get you to decommit from him now. He messes with your mind. He messes with your kids to mess with your mind. So we're seeing this right now. So he'll have you feeling like all these mistakes that your kids have made are on you. When in fact, you've done all that you can do to be the greatest parent you could be with the resources that you did have. And now he wants to make you to feel guilty about decisions that they made. When you equip them 
I don't know, man. The only thing that I can pray for is that, man, I'm going to put something in Taylor that, man, even if she get out there and make bad decisions, that she'll have the, the necessary equipment and the wisdom to be able to get back on the right track. Because we only can hope to put enough in them to keep them in a time when they have to make uh, sound decisions. Oh, my God. I, I, I wish I had more time. But, man, I believe next week we might be back in church. So, uh, so uh, you just kind of stay tuned for that. We, we may be called in church next week. So, uh, But Job 2 and 4 says this. Satan replied to the Lord, skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his life, but reach out and take away his health and he will surely curse you to his face. All right. Do with him as you please, the Lord said, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence and struck Job with a terrible boil from head to foot. See, health is a part of your wealth. And so we saw this strain on marriages and relationships because, man, you had people that had to quarantine and people end up were not getting paid while they were quarantined. So their spouse may have brought home something and now they're having to lose income. See, see, all of this was a part of Satan's strategy. You see, all of this was was part of a, a Satan's strategy. And so we got to realize that, yes, it was critical during COVID, but this was no different from any other time in history. He scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he set himself in ashes. In other words, Job was grieving. And I wonder how many of you right now that even though you're going to the games and even though you're going out, you're going to and fro. But right now you're grieving because to be honest with you, you lost some 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 stuff in the last year and a half. This is why we got to get back to church, because, man, for some reason, man, I believe that the anointing is there to lift the burdens and to destroy the yokes. Because some of you right now, you're grieving even as you're watching this right now. You're grieving as you're looking at me right now. And because there's some things you lost and nobody on this live and nobody next to you even know you lost it. Some of you lost a little bit of your sanctity and you lost a little bit of your mind because you lost so much of your peace. Some of you lost loved ones during COVID, to COVID. Some of you lost some of your health because you're long, you're, 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 you're long haulers. And so now you caught COVID and now it's still impacting your body. I got members right now who's still struggling from it and they caught COVID a year ago. So, so here it is. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? In other words, Job, you're going through all this. You still trying to maintain your kingdom connection with him, your commitment with him. But Job replied, you talk foolish, woman. You should accept only good things. Should we accept only good things at the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. Man, do you realize this? Can, can I just give you just a, a real quick perspective, real quick, just just real quick perspective? Oftentimes we judge Miss Joe by what she said, but we fail to evaluate what she's seen. She had seen a whole lot. She had seen some stuff and experienced some stuff. See, this is the same woman who just lost all her livelihood. She had just lost all her children that she gave birth to. And the truth of the matter is, I don't care how much you love your child. There's a connection that a child, whether it's a male or female, have with the mother that they're just not going to have with the father. Why? Because she carried them for nine months. I don't know how to calculate all that week stuff y'all be doing. It'd be like 36 weeks, 32. I don't know. You need to give me a month. Past I'm three months. Okay. But she carried these kids for so long. And so here it is. She grieving. Could it be that Miss Job said those painful things out of the pain that she was experiencing because she too was grieving. We often give Job all of the credit for standing strong, but the truth of the matter is everybody can't stand strong when they sustain all of those losses. Notice that how every time the messenger came, the Bible says, and while he was speaking, have you ever been in a situation in your relationship where it seemed like mess after mess just begin to compile and compound upon you? It seems like a build comes after build and a situation arises, then something else arises, and it seems like it seemed like you cannot win for losing in that relationship and that's what I believe what happened this is what I believe what happened to folk during COVID because I have come to the conclusion that extenuating circumstances or outside certain circumstances they either weaken your relationship or they strengthen the relationship some people were just on the other side of the spectrum where their relationship was already weak and now extenuating circumstances came and they became weaker. And so they divided based upon what happened then. But there were some people who got closer, as you said, you know what, 40 some percent of people got closer during COVID. They felt more of a connection on COVID because of the time they spent together, they got a chance to learn and lean on their spouses and their, and their loved ones during COVID in a time where we were cooped up in houses and apartments and condos. 
You, you see? So uh, my conclusion is that COVID, it didn't kill relationships. It exposed them. And that's the truth of the matter is. I believe somebody else, they, you really feel this. You really feel this. But there's hope. There's somebody right now who is listening right now. And you're, you're in a weakened relationship. You're in a weakened state. Why? Because you lost so much stuff. You lost so much peace. You've lost prosperity. Uh, you lost loved ones. Some of you have lost children. Man, we've buried members during COVID. And where we could even give them adequate honor because of COVID. The funeral homes were locked down, so I had to do graveside services. You, you see? There are people who, you know, even as a pastor, I grieve. I've lost people. There's some people say they're done with the church, not just done with my church. They're just done with the church, period. And so, you know, I can't do nothing but respect their decision as God would. But I grieve because here it is. I lost people, tons of people. So we're all grieving in certain aspects and we all lost certain things. But I don't believe that COVID is the cause. I believe COVID exposed some things that were there. And it either strengthened you or it weakened you. So did COVID kill my relationship? Did COVID kill your relationship? Nah, we can't put it on COVID. We got to put it on a series of decisions that we made throughout our marriage and relationships that ultimately allowed COVID to expose them. Man, I hope that you were blessed because I'm, I'm out of time. I got enough time just to pray for you, but... I really hope, man, because there's so much in this, man. I go, go back and read Job. I mean, it's almost like I almost got a book out of this, uh, and I'm amazed with how much relational wisdom is in the book of Job as a man and a wife go through some serious situations. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person that's watching right now. God, there's somebody who's hurting. There's somebody who's grieving right now. There's a single mother who lost some stuff, who lost a job because daycare wasn't open and so she had to stay home and her work didn't provide work from home opportunities. There's some married couple there that who was strained, who were already in a stressful situation because money was not there and now somebody lost a job. Father, I pray right now for somebody, God, right now to be restored. Everything the canker worm, the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten, restore them 100 fold, God. God, I honor you right now. I thank you right now. I give you the glory. I give you the honor and the praise in Jesus name. Hey, I'm Pastor Rich. Do know I love you and I'm praying for you. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Guess what? It's offering time here at the Word Center. That's right. It's time to give. This is the part of the service. You can get involved. So listen, I know the Bible saying Malachi. You know, when I was growing up in church, a lot of people use, I think, Malachi 3, 8. I always talk about will a man rob God. But I like to go down to verse 10, where God told us. He said, bring the tithes and the offering to the storehouse. And he said that there might be meat in my house. Then he said, improve me. I love that part, improve me. The reason why I love it so much because God is bound by his word. He is bound by his word. And he said, improve me and see when I open up a window of heaven that you won't have room enough to receive. So anytime God give you a dare or a challenge, because he's bound by his word, he's gonna bring it to pass. So I wanna challenge you today, bring all your tithes and offering to the storehouse so there can be meat in his house. That means you can make a withdrawal from heaven when you need it. But if you don't ever sow anything, you don't have anything to pull. So listen, we got a few ways you can give here at the Word Center. We like to test the gift here because it's just so easy. Just take your phone out, Text TWC space and the amount you want to give to 28950. Just that easy. If you've done it before, your information already in there. If it's your first time, it takes a few minutes to set it up. It's just that easy. You can give on our app or you can go to our website and give. And we also do a uh, cash app. You can do just, just type in dollar sign, the word center. And we ask that you use your real name because we want to give you credit for your giving. And I want to challenge you, just like God said, bring it all to the storehouse, and he's obligated to give you a blessing that you won't even have room to receive. I don't know about you, but I need some blessing like that in my life. Why are you preparing your gift? Can I pray over your seed? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you say we thank you for this beautiful day, these beautiful people, God, and the word that went forth today, God. God, I ask you to bless everyone offering today, God. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father. And Father, I pray that whatever these people need that's sown into this good ground, this fertile ground, God, that you meet their needs today, God. Father, we love and we thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. 
And we praise you in advance for the harvest that's coming our way. In Jesus' name, shout amen wherever you at. God bless you. See you soon.